Good morning, everyone. Happy International Nurses Day. Welcome to the UP Manila College of Nursing WHO Collaborating Center for Leadership in Nursing Development webinar in celebration of the International Nurses Day, Leadership in Public Health Nursing, Challenges and Direction. We are streaming live from our Zoom meeting platform to our Facebook page. I am Assistant Professor Jennifer Pagio, your host for this morning. Just some reminders for our participants on the Zoom platform to so please turn off your microphones and videos for the duration of the webinar while you are not called to speak as courtesy to our speakers. We wish to facilitate an interactive webinar, so please participate in our open forum after all our speakers have finished their presentation. You may submit your questions at any time through the chat box of our Zoom participants. For our Facebook Live audience, please type in your questions on the live stream comment section. Our facilitators will harvest and collate the questions for the open forum later on. If you are on social media, please follow the official UP College of Nursing Facebook page at UP Nursing and the UPCN Twitter account at UP Nursing. Feel free to share your insights, comments, snaps on our live stream link but don't forget to use the hashtag nurse lead, hashtag public health nurse, and hashtag International Nurses Day 2021. To formally begin our activity, please welcome the Dean of the UPCN and the Director of the WHO Collaborating Center, Professor Sheila Arbunito. Good morning to everyone and welcome to this uh, special webinar on leadership in public health nursing challenges and directions. Welcome to our esteemed speaker, former Board of Nursing, our panelists for today, Dr. Mary Ruth Sanchez Politico of the Department of Health, Health Human Resource and Development Bureau, Dr. Elnora Duque from Nurses Initiative for Change, Mr. Melbert Reyes, President of the Philippine Nurses Association, our partners from Johnson & Johnson and Give to Asia Foundation, Mr. Raghu Krishnan, Ms. Mara Chorian, John Vincent Flores, and Ms. Lee Tran. And to Chancellor Carmencita Di Padilla, UP Manila faculty, staff, and students, and to our alumni and friends who are joining us from different parts of the world. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. And today, we join the celebration of the International Nurses Day celebrating all nurses who are working as frontliners in this COVID-19 pandemic, nurses in the public health system, as well as nurses in academia and other institutions. We are reminded of the sacrifices of nurses and other healthcare professionals who are caring for patients in all their needs and situations amidst this pandemic. The theme of the International Council of Nurses for this year is nurses, a voice to lead, a vision for future healthcare. Indeed, we need to examine and share our vision of the future of healthcare. And we see advanced practice in nursing in that future. And today we put emphasis on leadership of nurses in public health nursing. Nurses lead and manage public health systems through primary health care. And nurses are the key to the successful implementation of universal health coverage. UPCN as a WHO collaborating center for leadership in nursing development work towards the fulfillment of shaping nurses who are leaders in public health. We believe in this vision so much that we accepted the challenge of the Department of Health through the Health Human Resource and Development Bureau to offer a leadership course in public health nursing, uh, which we started offering in 2019. And so far we have 100 graduates of the program. Uh, this course focused on strengthening the roles and uh, functions of public health nurses in health service delivery, health financing, health regulation, health governance, health human resource, and health informatics. And today we are launching a new leadership course focusing on the advanced practice roles of public health nurses in leading, managing, and collaborating with others for successful implementation of public health programs. We hope that through this project, with the support of Johnson & Johnson Foundation, we will be able to do more to achieve our vision of nurse leaders in public health. Let us all be part of this vision and take collective action to push for reforms and support for nurses in the country. Magandang umaga po muli sa lahat. 
Thank you, Dean. Our UP Manila activity would not be complete without a message from our beloved Chancellor. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Carmencita D. Padilla. Honorable uh, uh, Cora Anunuevo, former member of the PRC Board of Nursing, Dr. Mary Ruth Sanchez Politico, Department of Health, Health, Human Resource and uh, uh, Development Bureau, Dr. Ellen Elnora Duque, Nurses Initiatives for Change, Melbert Reyes the, from the Philippine Nurses Association, Mr. Ragu Krishnan, Managing Director of the Johnson & Johnson Philippines, and to Dean Sheila Bonito, the Dean of the College of Nursing, participants from all over the world. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And I see that we have participants from the different parts of the world. I'm so happy to be with you today. This is such an auspicious way to celebrate the International Nurses Day by having a webinar tackling the challenges and directions for leadership in public health nursing. I applaud your theme, nurses, voice to lead a vision for future healthcare, because of this challenging and unprecedented time, giving nurses stronger voices for more responsive leadership in their chosen domains of work is vital. We salute and honor our nurses for fulfilling their leadership roles amid the enormous tasks and difficulties at this time in our life. It is so nice to see that nurses are not just going to be for the clinics. And I'm now seeing nurses marching forward as public health nurses. We need you. As WHO Collaborating Center for Leadership in Nursing Development, the UP College of Nursing is in a distinct position to lead efforts in charting directions and, and challenges to public health nursing, especially at this time of crisis. More than any other healthcare professionals, nurses engage more in a range of leadership activities daily. And as I said, not just the clinics, but in the community, in the NGOs, in the corporate world, so not just in the hospital. Effective individual and institutional leadership is critical in delivering high quality education, patient care, doing research and community service. In today's ever-changing healthcare environment, nurses require leadership competence in varied settings. Gaining and augmenting knowledge and skills to become an effective nurse leader is one way to ensure quality health care now and for the future. And right now, the future is now. Let this webinar be a venue for the sharing of best practices, best experiences, best lessons on nursing leadership. May it also remind us of the leadership legacy of the late UPCM professor and PRC board member, my dear friend, Dr. Carmencita Meng Abaki, who developed the 2012 National Nursing Competency Standards being used as basis for the nursing education community to shape and re-envision the role of the nurses. I congratulate the college for the launch also today of its 12 million project with Johnson & Johnson Foundation, Nurse Lead, a leadership course for advanced practice in public health nursing in the Western Pacific region. With this, the continuing fora and regular efforts to revisit and re-evaluate the nursing profession vis-a-vis -vis the, the growing and changing needs the UPCN is primed for a stronger role in public health nursing leadership towards contributing to optimal health here and beyond. For a chancellor, it is indeed heartwarming that we are not just graduating students who will become very good nurses for the hospitals, but public health nurses, which we badly need in our history at the moment. So indeed, this is a most opportune time to acclaim and treasure our nurses for your selfless service to the nation's health. 
as they say, you mean you don't necessarily need a doctor, but you will always need a nurse. Additionally, the UP Manila community is very proud that you are embarking on this monumental task of being forward-looking leaders in the field of public health nursing. So more power to all of you. And once again, congratulations to the College of Nursing and welcome to this webinar. Back to you, Jen. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Padilla. To introduce our esteemed speaker, please welcome UPCN's Assistant to the Dean and core member of the WHO Collaborating Center, Associate Professor Luz Barbaradon. Good morning, everyone. It is my honor and pride to introduce the main speaker for our International Nurses' Day celebration. I have known her since I was a student of UP College of Nursing in the late 70s and introduced to me the concept of nursing activism. Florel, in her 2020 article, Concept Analysis of Nursing Activism, stated that nursing practice is grounded in the activism of historical nursing leaders and the guiding documents of professional nursing organizations. Activism is a component of nursing's social contract and covenant with humanity. And this covenant with humanity, Watson describes as a responsibility to sustain human caring, healing, health, and wholeness for humanity. Further, Florel said that if the primary responsibility of nursing is commitment to the patient, whether an individual, family, group, community, or population, nurses must include activism as an intervention to address health inequities. This type of activism moves nursing from a more passive but supportive role to one of taking action to influence change. Our speaker's life embodies all that was said about being a nurse activist, starting from her journey as a nursing student in the first quarter storm years, leading to the declaration of martial law. She obtained her Bachelor of Science in Nursing in 1972, then Master of Public Health in 1978 in UP. I was still a third-year nursing student then, an avid listener to her talks about nursing and activism. She pursued her Doctor of Philosophy in 2008, still from the University of the Philippines. I met her again when I was employed as a nurse in a non-government organization while she was working with Alay Kapwa Pangkalusugan alongside with community-based health programs, luminaries, the likes of Jaime Galdestan, Manuel Dairi, and Bobby De La Paz. While working as a community health nurse in ACAP, she used her activism in pursuing social justice reforms that support the health of society, working with Minda Luz Quesada, Linda Ortin, Jane Banyas, and Mary Dita Jackson to transform the Philippine Nurses Association to become the voice of nurses struggling to address health inequities, social accountability, and advancement of the nursing profession. Fast forward into the 90s, she was one of my teachers in the College of Public Health. She and I became colleagues at the University of the Philippines, Manila, College of Nursing from 1993 to 2016. She went on to become the director of the National Graduate Office for the Health Sciences of UP Manila from 2004 to 2007. When she retired in 2016, she served as a member of the Board of Nursing Professional Regulation Commission from 2016 to 2020. Along with other functions, she performed as Board of Nursing. She held the Oversight Committee on Public Health Nursing under the National Nursing Career Progression Program. She was also the project leader of the Philippine Professional Nursing Practice Standards, one of the major initiatives of the Board of Nursing, which was started by the previous one, headed by the late Dr. Carmen Sita Abakin. This authoritative document was promulgated as resolution number 22 series of 2017. True to her calling as a public health nurse, she is currently the president of Health Futures Foundation Incorporated or HFI, a non-government organization that empowers the poor and marginalized communities and their local governments in achieving access 
equality and equity in health and social development through the creation of communities of wellness. For her continuing engagements in health and community work, she was awarded the Distinguished Alumna in Public Health Promotion by the University of the Philippines Alumni Association in 2015. She was one of the founding officers of the Philippine Nursing Research Society and the Gerontology Nurses Association of the Philippines, or GINAP. She has been active with the Philippine Nurses Association for many years, notably as a member of the editorial board of the Philippine Journal of Nursing and as chair of its public relations committee. She is an active member of the Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing, IOTA Sigma Chapter, USA. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm applause to our speaker, the personification of the university's Husayat Dangal and Giting at Tapang, Dr. Cora Anyanuel. Thank you, Professor Luz Dones, for that kind introduction. Uh, my warm greetings to everyone, including all Facebook followers out there. As we celebrate International Nurses Day today, we honor the memories of Florence Nightingale being her birthday anniversary. It is but fitting that I begin my talk by remembering her work as a public health pioneer. She is acknowledged as having contributed significantly to the advancement of nursing and public health. We recognize that her work during the Crimean War in 1853 was one of her most important accomplishments and made her a national hero. Nightingale's leadership in times of crisis was very prominent. In the Crimean War, she embodied moral and tangible courage in the face of adversity. She was a powerful organizer, health reformer, a pioneer of the art of reflection on healing the sick and fixing a battered healthcare system. However, she warned us that reflection alone is not enough. She said, I think one's feelings wasted themselves in words. They ought to be distilled into action and into actions that bring result. In essence, to lead is to act with courage, integrity, and honesty. Nightingale's advice on infection control, emphasizing the importance of hand washing, environmental sanitation, ventilation, sunlight, and health literacy remains relevant in today's global fight against the coronavirus. She emphasized the use of statistics to support her demands for improved sanitation in military hospitals and civilian institutions. All these measures underpin nursing today as the world battles COVID-19 virus. How did Nightingale demonstrate courage to lead? After the war, she devoted herself to reforming nursing and public health in Britain and the world. Her activities, contributions, and achievements were directed towards epidemiology, modernizing nursing organizations, and hospital planning. She wrote many letters to politicians and statesmen advocating for a better health system. She was the champion in showing the policymakers of her time that meaningful change can come from strong political will. One of her greatest works, Notes on Nursing, was written not only for nurses, but also for all women. By, found, by founding the nursing school at St. Thomas Hospital in 1860, she aimed to train and educate nurses. Nightingale understood evidence-based practice when she admonished that the most important practical lesson that can be given to nurses is to teach them what to observe and how to observe. Nightingale pioneered and practiced transformational leadership as described by Anna or the American Nurses Association. Her leadership style might be considered as a stair-step leadership development model. Briefly, the model is based on the concept that all nurses are leaders as novice leaders and nurses achieve leadership competence with time. So this model supports the idea that nurse leadership evolves and that no one is born with all the leadership skills to become a transformational leader 
the highest level of the model. A transformational leader inspires people, empowers them, leads change towards a shared vision. With the COVID-19 pandemic, nurses can follow the perseverance and courage of Nightingale. So let's proceed now to my topic, Leadership in Public Health Nursing, Challenges and Direction. My talk will cover the following. The ICN 2021 theme, Universal Healthcare or UHC and Public Health. The goals, the goal of UHC and the vision for future healthcare 2030. I will identify key issues and challenges and the needed crucial changes and policy directions. Next is leadership in public health nursing in response to the vision, clarifying the main goal of public health nursing and what leadership in action for health equity means. Then we go to the regulation of advanced practice nursing or APN in public health as a major direction. I will touch on the following provision in the comprehensive nursing bill public health nursing certification by the pr board of nursing and professional practice outcomes for apn in public health in level seven and level eight so that's the coverage of my talk the icn 2021 theme the importance of nursing leadership and nursing's response to covid 19 are two dynamics reflected in this year's theme for international nurses day as mentioned, nurses, a voice to lead, a vision for future healthcare. The central theme of, uh, of a voice to lead, quoting Howard Cotton, ICN Chief Executive Officer. He speaks of the importance of nursing leadership and the issues and problems around the world with nursing voices not being heard or included at the high tables for health systems and policy decision making. The sub theme of a vision for future healthcare relates to nursing leadership coming to the fore during the pandemic. Katin points out that models of care could be much more nurse led. He says nurses save lives during the pandemic and save and support families and communities. They are changing the world in terms of what they're doing in their daily practice. Annette Kennedy, ICN president, said as well. This global COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the lives of nurses and the health systems they serve. It has shown the world the important role that nurses play in keeping people healthy across the lifespan. Certainly, nurses are on the front lines battling COVID-19 while continuing to improve access to quality, safe, and affordable health care. So related to this, uh, let's watch this video. Nurse Danessa sharing her experience in the field. Video, please. Hi, my name is Danessa Simoy. I'm a community health nurse from Health Teachers Foundation. And I'd like to share to you my experiences as a community health nurse during the COVID-19 pandemic. Currently, I'm assigned in one of the barangays in the municipality of Taal in Batangas to implement a community-based health and wellness program. The program aims to create health-empowered and self-reliant communities by conducting community health mobilization, training community volunteer health workers, and providing primary health care services focusing on health promotion and disease prevention. To give you an example of the activities in our program, last November 2020, we focused on COVID-19 prevention where we trained the community volunteer health workers to conduct health promotion sessions. Here, they gave a, a health teaching on the essentials and basics of COVID-19, how to prevent COVID-19, and how to boost the immunity. We also conducted health promotion sessions on medicinal plant preparation, which helped minimize the risk of getting COVID-19 from the already crowded health facilities, because now they know how to manage common ailments in the community. We also empower the community on planning, coordinating with other stakeholders of the community, and monitoring them, uh, mobilizing them to solve their identified problems. Personally, as a nurse emerging in the barangay, I 
also take part in the social activities of the community. And just recently, we had a community pantry and I took an active role in helping the BLGU uh, create systems for the minimum health protocols to be followed, maintained, and understood by the people there. So the experience of being a community health nurse during this time of the pandemic is very different because it's a different picture of doing it together with the community towards community development. And as they say, together, but uh, with physical distancing and minimal community gatherings, but still working together with the community. Thank you, Nurse Danessa. In another scenario, Hi, the ICN said that nurses hold the key to achieving universal health coverage, or UHC. According to WHO's definition, UHC is achieved when all people and communities can use the promotive, preventive, curative, rehabilitative, and palliative health services they need of sufficient quality to be effective while also ensuring that the use of these services does not expose the user to financial hardship. UHC is built on the foundations of human rights and equity with health services allocated according to people's needs and funded according to their ability to pay. UHC drives the global health agenda of health for all. It is embedded in the sustainable development goals. Yet, you, how UHC relates to public health has been under less consideration. All the promotive and preventive services are included in the definition of UHC. Most efforts and resources have focused more on the provision of personal health services and less on public health. This situation is disturbing because public health interventions often provide better health value for money than curative services and can result in increased equitable health benefits. What is the vision for future healthcare to realize the goal of UHC? To address this question, I came across a report by the World Economic Forum's Global Future Council on Health and Healthcare, titled, A Vision for the Future, Transforming Health Systems. The paper discusses the present and future challenges health systems face adopting a systems approach and putting the experiences of individuals, families, and communities at the center of its analysis. The report studies five uh, diseases in five countries, compares the current situation with the ideal for 2030, and suggests policy initiatives to improve access and equity. Take note that the key word here is equity which means providing various levels of support and assistance, distributing society's resources, depending on the specific needs and abilities of the people. Whereas equality means providing the same level of assistance and opportunity to all segments of society. Halimbawa, giving 1,000 pesos to all Filipinos as ayuda or help Mahirap man o mayaman, poor or rich, under Congressional Bill Bayanihan 4. The report identifies key issues and challenges. These are population growth, aging, the emergence of uh, personal, personalized medicine, uh, which is the use of uh, information about the person's genes or, uh, or proteins to prevent, uh, treat, uh, diagnosed a uh, disease like cancer. Issues and challenges also include the growing potential of new technologies, rapid rise, rapidly rising health costs, and the entry of uh, this disruptive uh, that, uh, and non-traditional competitors. So what are these? These are new products and services that displace or complement current ones uh, such as telemedicine, uh, we, are, uh, we are familiar with this, retail clinics, and mobile health applications. 
these issues and challenges will increase the demand for services and affect the performance and sustainability of healthcare delivery systems. Globally, by 2050, one in six people will be over 65 years old. More people will live with one or more chronic diseases and healthcare spending is projected to continue increasing. What are the changes and policy directions uh, that are needed? The vision for 2030, as articulated in the World Economic Forum paper, which I mentioned earlier, suggests the need for significant improvements to care and much more equitable access to healthcare. It identifies nine policy initiatives to help achieve the vision for future healthcare. Okay, one, work in partnership across sectors to design the health systems of the future. Policy makers, academia, industry leaders, members of civil society and practitioners must work closely together to reorient health systems to become people-centered and holistic. The people-centered approach supports dignity, non-discrimination, participation, empowerment, compassion, trust, respect, and a partnership of equals. They are at the core of how we would like ourselves, our families and communities to be treated. Second, address the social determinants of health and health inequities. To ensure that people stay healthy, it is essential to address these broader social and economic conditions affecting health and provide good quality and people-centered health services. Next, prioritize and support universal health coverage, including appropriate human and physical resources. Access to basic services should be recognized as imperative, supported by dedicated budget allocations, and an emphasis on the quality of services. Increase the focus on preventing disease and promoting health. Prevention and early detection should be supported across all generations from birth to advanced age. Type 2 diabetes and heart disease are two examples of diseases whose incidence could be both significantly reduced and better controlled with an effective regulation and access to better nutrition and exercise. Empower and engage people and their communities. Who defines empowerment as a process through which people gain greater control over decisions and, uh, and actions affecting their health? Staying healthy requires actions and choices by individuals and their families. Government policies and programs should assist individuals in staying healthy by providing us access to the correct information and improving health literacy. Next, strengthen primary health care or PHC. So it has been mentioned that primary health care is the cornerstone of universal health coverage. The goal of empowered communities and the success of universal health care can be achieved mainly through primary health care. We need to distinguish between primary health care and primary care because these are two different ideas that often are confused. So when we say primary health care, this is a philosophical framework of specific health system policies and strategies. Primary care, next slide. Primary care is one of the elements, next slide please. Primary care is one of the elements of PHC. It is the first contact accessibility and use, identification with the regular source of care, care that is person-focused rather than disease-focused. Nurses are part of the first level of contact with the health system. Seventh, promote people-centered innovation and technologies bringing the human touch and sophisticated technology together means using the technologies that are appropriate to empower people. Innovative 
technology puts patients in control. An example is what we call artificial intelligence or AI. AI holds promise as healthcare technology for patients who wish to schedule doctor appointments based on the severity of symptoms, monitor their health status, and notifying a human nurse immediately if the parameters get out of control. Next, allocate appropriate resources to health and social systems and maximize value for money. Governments need to create enough fiscal space. That is flexibility in their spending choices to sustain a minimum level of public investment in essential health services and minimize poor households brought about by out-of-pocket expenses. Investment in health becomes concrete when given a sufficient budget and health is considered a priority spending of the government. The last policy direction, promote accountability and leadership. Achieving the vision requires strong accountability mechanisms through the application of laws, regulations, ethical standards, and norms throughout the whole health system. Leading with accountability is helping people assume responsibility for their role in achieving a shared goal, providing opportunities for learning and, in, and improvement. Accountability works well when there is a supportive environment. So, what leadership in public health nursing is needed to respond to these policy initiatives towards achieving uh, the vision of uh, universal health care. So first, let us be clear about the main goal of public health nursing. The main goal of public health nursing is to address the health disparities within marginalized communities by focusing on the environmental, physical, and social determinants of health. These are the conditions that influence individual and group differences in health status. They include economic stability, educational level, healthcare access, food security, neighborhood, neighborhood environment, and social issues such as ethnicity and culture. There are three aspects of leadership action for health equity that relates to public health nurses personal knowledge, attitude, and skills for action on the social determinants, having a legitimate role to play in intersectoral action and community development, an organizational culture that values action on the determinants within a population health context. Public health nurses, play a crucial role in improving population health outcomes by educating communities and delivering care within them. In this leadership position, they can make positive changes through community building and policy reform. So I would like to invite you uh, to watch this second uh, video shared by uh, Nurse Nicole. Hi, I am Nicole Soto, Projects Associate from Health Futures Foundation. I am currently handling its banner project, Alag Aka, which means Alay sa Ginhawa at Kalusugan in 3rd to 5th class municipalities in Batangas this year. Working as a nurse in the field of public health this COVID-19 pandemic, I witnessed how it has disrupted the strides that have been made before towards universal health care and it has widened once again the health disparities in our community. This is where nurse leaders can greatly contribute to changing the health landscape. To help communities gain access to primary health care, we partner with local stakeholders, the decision makers, and the community alike, sharing with them the vision of a health-empowered and sustainable community. 
through participatory social investigation, we help them identify the health barriers existing in their communities. Through capacity building, it is not just of the barangay health workers, but also training the community members to be leaders in health. We facilitate and enable them to mobilize themselves towards a share, starting at the grassroots level, to encourage the community to participate in the various facets and stages of project implementation. We work with the community to address their needs and empower them to claim their health rights. Effectuating change in the community can be a challenge. Therefore, to lead community health nurses leading these communities, I continuously motivate them by providing mentorship and giving feedback, not only on points to improve, but helping them revisit their accomplishments to build their confidence, ease their frustration, to inspire them towards our vision. Aside from this, as a leader, I found listening is key in helping other nurse leaders because every experience in the community is different, even more so during a pandemic. By listening, I am able to understand and collaborate to solve challenges encountered in our practice. Most importantly, being reflective and encouraging this quality allows for this unique experiences to be an opportunity to learn and develop as a public health nurse. The pandemic has highlighted how the fight against COVID-19 and other diseases should be and remains to be in the community to achieve universal health care. This is why there is a great need to equip the communities with more nurses. Okay, thank you, Nurse Nicole. Nurse Nicole emphasized that public health nurses are leaders in improving health services, that there is a great need to strengthen their capacity to equip them with new innovations in public health interventions. Okay, next. Cohen and uh, Ruther argue that public health nurses have limited involvement outside of their traditional uh, functions, uh, which has to do with factors that impact effective leadership at the level of practice. And these factors which I consider as challenges are, uh, one, nurses perceived, perceived lack of knowledge, skill, and personality to engage in social action. So comments like, hindi ako political person, hindi ko yan style better to be cautious. So this conventional view of the nursing profession as non-confrontational threatens leadership roles in community development or policy change. Next, lack of sense of professional autonomy to finding solutions within their organizations to overcome some of the barriers they face in addressing social and health inequities. Doubting that a person has responsibility for one's health. The view that no, it is hard to change one's health behavior and practices. So, bahala na. Then, lack of time, management support, and organizational philosophy. Management support and organizational culture. They are essential in promoting and sustaining effective public health nursing practice. Then, we have narrow job descriptions and workload measurement tools that do not support community action. There's fear of uh, political activism. Yung nga, no? nabanggit kanina yan, Professor ano, Donis. No? Political activism to address broader health inequities and limited understanding on the part of the public and colleagues in the health team on the PHN role in addressing health inequity. Public health nursing practice is more often limited to uh, individualized uh, clinical care and uh, health education. On the other hand, PHN man may have been mistakenly trying to do it all in a fragmented way, contributing to a lack of confidence and clarity on the nurse's role. There is uh, inability to practice to full scope 
and nurses feel devalued and powerless to promote change. Thus, there is a need to prepare our public health nurses to be ready and assume leadership roles in the community, primary health care facilities, and long-term care settings. As managers, supervisors, and administrators at all levels of the healthcare delivery system. Similarly, there is a need for reforms to ensure that the healthcare system fully utilizes the competencies of nurses by providing them opportunities to enhance their roles and contributions. Not to overlook the need for our nurses to be valued, sustained, supported, and justly compensated. Higher educational institutions, the Department of Health, nursing associations, and private stakeholders should offer continuing education focus on these directions of preparing our public health nurses for leadership roles and advancement in practice. Okay, now um, let's go to the professional regulatory body. Regarding the role of uh, reg uh, reg regulatory bodies, the ICN Code of Ethics states that nursing regulatory bodies play a fundamental role in facilitating nursing's contribution and leadership in public health, particularly in primary health care. Among others, regulatory bodies of the nursing profession can promote nursing practice acts that allow for full utilization of nursing competencies and potentials. Work with legislators to eliminate any inconsistencies in legislation and regulatory practices that restrict nurses from fulfilling their full potential in primary health care. Work with educational institutions to ensure academic requirements or curricula meet the population's needs in terms of demographics, epidemiology, cultural practices, etc. Then next, uh, regularly review legislation and regulations to ensure PHC is a cornerstone, support current and future nursing practice, and do not hinder appropriate nursing in innovations as a contribution to transforming the healthcare system. Then, work, this is important, work with other professional regulators to resolve issues such as the sc scope of practice, title protection, etc. So for example, the scope of nursing uh, practice vis-a-vis -vis midwifery and uh, medicine. Now, uh, the above mentioned actions bring us to the comprehensive nursing bill refiled in Congress. So the bill contains a provision on advanced practice nursing aligned with a strategic direction for its regulation. So this will ensure that the performance of nursing competencies in terms of their duties and responsibilities are legally protected. The provision in the bill reads, advanced practice nursing refers to the direct autonomous or collaborative expert care of nurses with higher level competencies as defined in this act. Now, so advanced practice nurse must have acquired a substantial theoretical knowledge and decision-making skills reflecting specialized and expanded com competencies over and above general practice nurse requirements. Certification is required to be an APN, Advanced Practice Nurse. And um, this is the process of validating achievements through a variety of measures and assessment strategies to confirm or attest to the competency of an advanced practice nurse upon completion of a specialty program or continuing professional development program or both. Uh, the certification is issued by the Board of Nursing and the PRC upon endorsement of the specified 
recognized and credentialed specialty organization in accordance with the policies, standards, and guidelines. Regarding advanced practice in public health nursing, let me share a bit what we have started in the Board of Nursing uh, uh, during our term chaired by Dr. Glenda Ar Arquiza. Uh, the, the APN in public health is under the Career Progression and Specialization Program or CPSP for nursing profession, uh, which is now led by uh, Bon Carmelita Divina Gracia. Uh, she and Dr. Gloria Arcos, uh, who was the main lead at the time, worked until the finalization of the CPSP guidelines for nursing. So the aim of the CPSP is to enhance and upgrade the competencies and qualifications of professionals for the practice of their professions pursuant to the qualification, Philippine Qualifications Framework. Uh, you have heard this, no? PQF, PQF. And the Asian Qualifications Reference Framework, or AQRF. Now, there are a few slides that I will show you to introduce, only to introduce the document on advanced practice nurse in public health. So this document is still a work in progress, um, meaning a draft that is being finalized by a committee under the CPSP. So as I mentioned, uh, certification is required to signify a nurse's specific competence and expertise in public health nursing and other nursing speci uh, specialty areas. In the Philippines, it is the PR bond who gives the certification based on the guidelines of the uh, CPSP of the PRC or CPD. Then following, uh, well, I said, no, no, the, the slides, no? So these, um, the, the next two slides refer to the professional practice outcomes for APNs in public health level seven and level eight. <clears throat> so level seven corresponds to a post-baccalaureate competencies, master's prepared or, or equivalencies. And the qualification title is Certificate in Advanced Practice Nurse One in Public Health. So you see them, uh, you see their competencies, you know, management of uh, health service delivery, health, ser uh, health unit services, community based uh, and population uh, focus programs, supervisory and leadership responsibilities, etc., etc. Okay. Level eight corresponds to doctoral, next slide, to doctoral level competencies or their uh, equivalencies. The qualification title is certificate in APN2 in public health. And the competencies here are, well, uh, uh, it, the competencies entail executive or senior management and leadership levels in public health and health organizations. Okay. So this practice constitutes a demonstration of expert, innovative, and evidence-based administration of public health nursing and healthcare delivery at the national, regional, and global levels. Okay, and so on and so forth. Now, next slide. Okay, uh, the, the two slides uh, show the alignment matrix of APN1 and APN2 in public, in public health to the PQF. So the PQF levels of qualifications are differentiated by descriptors of expected, expected learning outcomes in three aspects, knowledge, skills and values, application and degree of independence. So I'm uh, presenting this to show you what the Board of Nursing has initiated so far. Now, the next uh, two slides, okay, please advance. Okay, uh, so the next two slides, um, again, next slide. Okay. 
So uh, these are samples, no? Kasi mahaba ito, very detailed, no? Describing the practice outcomes for level 7 and level 8 according to the four domains of professional practice outcomes. So these domains are the same domain, domains that we use to describe practice standards. But that is another um, document. And it is a, a PRC resolution, PR, PR bond resolution. So these domains are, next slide, please. Next. Okay, so these domains are value-based nursing practice, knowledge-driven nursing practice, outcome-oriented professional relationships, and leadership and govern governance. Okay, so again, the following slides uh, will uh, quickly show you the structure of these domains. The value-based nursing practice includes care of clients, ethical moral and legal practices and personal and professional values knowledge driven nursing practice encompasses research evidence-based nursing practice and continual quality improvement next outcome oriented professional relationships relate to communication collaboration and transcultural nursing and leadership and governance include professional outcomes in personal and professional development accountability, positive practice environment, social responsibility, and resource man management. Um, another project is the nursing bill that, is, uh, pa that, is, that has to be passed into law before the present Congress ends. Kung hindi, balik zero na naman tayo. So the BON and the technical working group with Dr. Larry Dumlao at its helm, are working double time to push the bill's passage in Congress. So let's pray no? that uh, the year 2021 will uh, favor our wish that we have that we will have our new nursing law. To end my talk, I would like to underscore important points. Public health nurses provide leadership for emerging advances in population health, healthcare, and healthcare system, particularly in addressing inequities. Equipped with a baccalaureate degree or higher, public health nurses are prepared to handle multiple determinants of health and participate fully in the challenges of attaining the vision of health for all with a scope of practice that includes community building, health promotion, policy reforms, and system level changes. Public health nurses have a vital role and responsibility as leaders in public health. In responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, public health nurses should be competently prepared for health crises and emergencies working within communities to help prevent the spread of the disease through prevention, education, and screening. On a higher level of practice, public health nurses should be active and visible in developing a coordinated, organized, and comprehensive approach to addressing the pandemic. Leadership is one of the core competencies for public health nurses. They are regarded as leaders in promoting and protecting the health of the, of the populations using knowledge from nursing, social, and public health sciences. They should advance in their career in order to be effective leaders. Nurses are leaders of change who, like Florence Nightingale, not only attend to the people's health needs, but work to change the societal conditions for a better future. So thank you for listening. Mabuhay, long live ang mga nurses sa buong mundo. Mabuhay ang mga public health nurses at ang lahat ng health workers ng bayan. Mabuhay, mabuhay, long live. My references are below. Okay. Back, 
uh, to you, uh, Miss Jen. Thank you, Ma'am Cora. Thank you, Dr. Arnie Nuevo. Your presentation really has underscored how wide, how deep the role of the PHN is and its continued uh, relevance to our present healthcare scenario. Please don't forget to type in your questions on the Zoom chat box. We'll take note of them and on the FB live comment section. So now we proceed to our panel reactors. We have three panel reactors for today and I will introduce them to you, um, each, each one of them before they speak. Our first reactor is, from, is the Chief of the Planning and Standards Division of the Department of Health, Human Resource and Development Bureau. Prior to this, she served as a rural health physician under the Doctors to the Barrio program and she has a degree on Masters in Public Health, major in Health Systems and Development from the Department, uh, Development Academy of the Philippines and Diploma on Strategic Human Resource Management from Ateneo de Manila University. She finished her BS Nursing from UP Manila, my classmate, and Doctor of Medicine from Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila. She will expound on the critical role of the, primary health, of the public health nurse and share on the prevailing workforce and workplace issues in public health. Please, let's all give a warm virtual welcome to Dr. Mary Ruth Sanchez Pulido. Good morning, uh, mga kapwa ko nurse. Uh, happy nurse, International Nurses Day. Um, first, I would like to thank the college for this opportunity to engage. Uh, it's always nice to stay connected to where we came from. For, uh, to our professors in our alma mater as well. Um, please allow me to share my screen. For... So we... We echo a lot of points raised by Dr. Anonuevo in her lecture, especially emphasizing the role of nurses in strengthening primary health care, which is the cornerstone of UHC implementation. Now, moving forward from the passing of the UHC law, the challenge is now how to implement it at the local levels, especially in the far-flung communities. And being at the forefront of health reforms, the role of public health nurses on the delivery of services at the primary care level in, in addressing health problems or becoming leaders and managers of people, processes, policies, and uh, power or organizations is, uh, cannot be <clears throat> underemphasized. These roles require competencies for leadership and development. But as you can see, only 13% of our nurses in the Philippines are practicing in <clears throat> public primary care facilities, uh, which include rural health units, city health offices, barangay health stations, and barangay health centers. Um, <clears throat> I remember one scene from Reply 1994. I think many of our listeners are familiar with it where one professor said this to a junior colleague. He said that it's not easy to decide to work in a provincial branch. But as you know, residents here in the city only get to watch operations being done. But if you go to Busan, you will be doing surgeries and you will be doing some decision-making too. What we're saying is mastery of skills require practice and serving in public health especially in rural communities provides opportunities to practice leadership and management skills because if you see the role of nurses in supporting UHC it's not just the service delivery you will manage local health systems health information supervise health staff and implementation of health programs now understanding this need for improving the competencies of nurses in partnership with the college, we developed the leadership and development course for patients, uh, which uh, according to Dean in her opening remarks, focuses on the health systems approach. It has six modules. And uh, from 2019, we started offering the course to under scholarship for PHNs. And as of last year, there were already 98 
uh, page ends who completed the course. And we are happy with the current developments uh, and initiatives of the college as a collaborating center for leadership and development. And uh, our professional regulatory regulation commission uh, board of nursing in uh, their hard work for crafting the draft bill for the amendment of the nursing act. Uh, but beyond these uh, efforts, we want to emphasize the need for us to continuously encourage our nurses to go where they are needed in the country. Um, it's a great challenge, but a great opportunity to exemplify nursing leadership roles when we go to the communities. Uh, yun lang po, maraming salamat. Over to you, Dr. Jen. Thank you, Dr. Politico. Uh, the graduates that Dr. Politico was mentioning uh, a while ago are actually present in our Zoom meeting. So if you are a graduate of the PHN leadership course of UPCN, please raise your hand uh, to be recognized. Kawai kawai sa mga graduates ng PHN leadership course. Now let us go to our second panel reactor. Our second panel reactor is the former faculty of the UP Manila College of Public Health and currently representing the, advo the advocacy group Nurses Initiatives for Change, Advocates for Nursing and Healthcare Services Reform. Please welcome to the virtual floor, Professor Elnora Duque. Leon, ayaw. Oh, wala. Mute siya eh. Paano ko unmute? Ma'am Nora, we can hear you. Yes, okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Now, uh, I would like to start by sharing with you what the Nurses Initiative for Change is. Do we have this file? The slides, please. The Nurses Initiative for Change is made up of retired nurses with valued local and international experience. Our vision is quality health and nursing care. And our vision, our mission to attain this vision We need to make nurses become a unified force in bringing about change in the healthcare system. And as we have heard, we have an aging population so that our nurses who are retired must also be active based on the concept of a healthy mind. If we don't use our brain, we will lose it. And also the socialization of the elderly. And so our objective includes, we are advocates for nursing and health care services reform. And also that we adapt a healthy lifestyle, which is a form of empowerment of the elders to maintain their health and to also see how their families and others and extend their services as well as a nurse, their neighbors and all that. Okay, to attain our vision mission, these are our uh, strategies. The first one is we, we, had, we made a clarion call for a leadership forum on public health nursing, the challenges and directions. This we have um, tried to uh, talk with the the, uh, the uh, group we call the Coalition of uh, Philippine Professional Nursing Association. And uh, now we are happy to see the College of Public Health leading in the organization of leadership forums such as the one that we just had, where we learned a lot 
about the problems, the context in which nurses now work with, and also the, the need to uh, improve their, their knowledge, their values and understanding of how to work with the community. We does have many problems in the restructuring of the healthcare system. And so we try to call on uh, many organizations to help and hope that uh, in many ways we are able to help by sharing with them uh, our expertise. Some has invited us in their uh, forum and uh, we uh, engage them in what we call systemic approach in dealing with the problem. First is for us to help them discover and appreciate the best of what it is, current practices, and also to uh, in dream or envision what could be done, and then learn to manage the changes that they propose, and also to deliver what are the products expected from their work. We appreciate the importance of health, of politics in health. And so uh, we also uh, encourage nurses and organizations to uh, also participate in the selection of party -like candidates. We are not thinking of only one organization. Many could really uh, apply. And even in for, um, for uh, I think it is the owners that has been actually uh, recognized as a party list, that they could have as many candidates there. And depending on the number of votes, you could have so many uh, politicians representing nursing in Congress. This is because we also need to have a reformulation of legislations in nursing. The Philippine nursing law has, we know that there has been a bill and they are working hard on it. We look at the universal health law and implementing rules and regulations. And there's much to, to do because it doesn't reflect the, impl implication, the implementation of the universal health law is something to look at the policies there and where nursing comes in. Now we're still faced with the problem of devolution where the health services has been devolved to the rural health unit or LGU. So the position of nursing has become political. And this also will have problems with the choose of the more competent nurses. As we said, we have prepared nurses for advanced courses, but where are they? Where are the nurses? Who are the nurses that the municipal? Well, we have seen models of the ones that have been developed by the Baranga, the, by the uh, uh, Future Health Foundation. And it's good to hear models of the nurses presented by Dr. Cora Anonuevo. Another one is the need to work with health profile individuals. I think you can identify the people who talk a lot about reform, like Peter Wallace, Gideon Lasco, is a, is a medical anthropologist. Peter Wallace is an economist. And we have our own Dr. Amelia Maglacas, who was the first and only Filipino nursing scientist the WHO, and we tried to uh, write opinions at the inquirer, and many people uh, react to it and uh, answer it. And one that I remember is a, a person who said that he had difficulty in using the health services, so she, he has to go to private sector. So they have difficulty of access. Okay, we also need to. Uh, renew the nurses initiative for change. We started with about 10 to 15 people and we have only five people left. And so we tried to talk with young nurses who retired, but 
still very active, like Cora Anonuevo is a member, Lynn Lorenzo is a member, uh, Nelly Castillo, who was from the DOH. And then we have, of course, we included Leia Pacquet and uh, Annabel Boromio. And uh, we are inviting other young people, to younger uh, retired people, because we believe that while we have retired, we are not tired. And we have so much left over that could be used effectively. And so now I invite uh, our younger leaders to join us and share their expertise, especially in a forum like this, where I do learn a lot about the directions and the challenges and how nursing and other leaders in public health are responding to the challenge. So thank you, Cora, for a very uh, broad perspective, as well as a good example, starting with Florence Nightingale as a good as a model. She is the first epidemiologist because she was able to relate the care of people and the health of people in relation to the practice of washing hands. And he was considered the first epidemiologist because he was able to, she was able to look into this before the germ theory. So that's all that I could say and hope that the College of Nursing continues to conduct this forum because it provides opportunity for all to share their, under, their knowledge, their skills, and of course, the relationship that has been broadened to be able to work with uh, other sectors. So um, I thank you, Ma'am Nora. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am Nora. We will entertain questions um, in after our last presenter, but please continue sending your questions. Our last reactor is. PNA President Melbert Reyes. Our panel would not be complete without the only national organization of nurses in the country recognized by the International Council of Nurses. To react to Dr. Anyanueva's talk and share on the key role of the Philippine Nurse Association in supporting public health nurses, please welcome the national president of the PNA, President Melbert Reyes. Hey, well, um, speaker. Um, good morning. Can I be heard, Ma'am Chen? Yes, sir. Dinig na dinig po, loud and clear. Thank you very much, uh, uh, former Board of Nursing, Dr. Cora Anonuevo, for that very insightful uh, presentation. Congratulations po, Ma'am. Uh, una po sa lahat ay nais ko po munang bumati ng Happy International Nurses Day to all. Yan. Um, I think... Uh, Hindi ko mag hindi nagpe-present ang aking slides. I would like to focus po on the uh, um uh, let me share my slides hindi ko siya <laughs> nakikita. I'm sorry po for the technicality. You have started sharing the screen sir. You can try to press the next slide. Oh. Uh, Hindi ko kasi siya nakikita dito, Ma'am Jen. But anyways po, um, okay, I will share na lang. Oops. We can see it, sir, now. Okay. So I would like to focus my uh, questions on the uh, uh, the statement of uh, Dr. Anunueva that nurses can be the catalyst for change towards the future of healthcare. But the question is, how can we do it? It's not working. Anyway. Oops. 
our apologies for having some technical difficulties from the end of uh, President Melbert Reyes. As soon as he connects back, we will present him again to you to deliver his comments and his reaction. So Abby, can we now go to the uh, open forum uh, slide, please? Thank you. Right now we are at 435 uh, participants on Facebook. So thank you for your active participation. We are noting all of your comments. Um, but again, let me remind, please do not share your email addresses. We are not collecting any email addresses. We are hiding those email addresses for your own privacy and protection. We've been receiving a multitude of burning questions from all of you, from the Zoom participants, composed primarily of nursing organization leaders, public health practitioners, and graduates of the UPC and Public Health Nursing Leadership Development Course, as well as faculty members, nursing students, and nurses in practice to our FB live stream comments. May I request our speakers to turn on their camera so we can place you on spotlight as you answer the question. We recognize that all of you have varied comments and questions, so we are trying our best to curate them, prioritize them, and um, present them based on relevance. We're going to try to combine them as well so that in the interest of them. So while we wait for other questions to come in, these are just some of the questions. I invite our uh, panel and our main speaker, Honorable Cora Nuevo, to respond. Okay. So our first question here is an update, Ma'am Cora, on the slide that you presented about um, uh, the practice level seven and eight. The question is, what is the status of the draft for the PHN practice levels for level seven and eight? Is there any current update, ma'am? Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for that question. Um, well, before I ended my term and exited the Board of Nursing, um, I um, endorse the, uh, this document on uh, advanced practice nursing in public health to the CPSP of nursing. No? So there is uh, each board has its own council no? the, 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 uh, relating to uh, CPSP. And now, um, after I have spoken with um, the, uh, Ms. Perlpo, <laughs> because uh, she is um, one of our consultants in CPD, CPSP is under CP, CPD or the Continuing Professional Development. And um, even, well, even in the Board of Nursing, there is a, there is a point person or a, or a, or a committee and uh, members of the committee. And they are uh, the ones who, uh, who really evaluate or review the uh, contents of the, of the document and then pass, it, pass this on to the, uh, the higher level no, of the uh, PRC's uh, Management Council on uh, CPD and CPSP. So that's the status now. Uh, uh, the, the 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 board of nursing is holding on to the uh, to the to the document, and hopefully, uh, this will be uh, submitted to the higher level. Thank you, Ma'am Cora. Um, I know that there are a lot of questions when you mentioned about the advanced practice nurse for public health nursing. And there is indeed a clamor considering the need of the society right now. But there are queries about um, specific, specific concepts related to the advanced practice nurse for public health nursing. A uh, question was posed. Here is uh, some related questions. What's the difference between the advanced practice nurse being advocated in the Philippines as far as the public health nurse uh, APN is concerned compared with what we what a lot of people understand about the US nurse practitioner. How would we how would you categorize that or differentiate that? 
no uh, we cannot still differentiate because we have uh, we have not uh, instituted the uh, APN uh, in general no in the Philippines that's why we need the legislation first to legally protect mm. the advanced practice nurses so uh, what we are doing now is really to make sure that the provision on advanced practice uh, advanced practice nursing uh, will be there no inputted and once the nursing bill is passed uh, into law so that will give us a boost no to really continue mm. with our programs and uh, and really uh, make uh, sure that nurses advance in their career in whatever field they are in. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ma'am Cora. Now I'd like to throw the question to our, our panel reactors, um, specifically Dr. Politico and Dr. Duque. Um, we will have the input of President Melbert Reyes in a bit uh, as we insert it in this discussion because he's already back. The question is, um, in this, uh, it, the nurses are supposed to be rooted and brought to provide much needed clinical acumen directly uh, to provide the, 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 the needs uh, of the population, whether it is to, to collaborate and supervise our midwives and our barangay health workers. Uh, do you think that the current preparation of our public health, health nurses now, are they ready to assume these posi this, uh, this position? And specifically for the Department of Health, do you think that um, we have enough, uh, we have systems in place to ensure that our public health nurses can assume this role readily? Dr. Jen, can I respond? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. So, Politico. In line with the UHC Act, there is a provision that states that the health sciences education for all health professions have to be reoriented towards uh, primary health care. Meaning um, the direction we're moving towards is that when uh, our nurses graduate from the BS degree, that they are more or less practice ready. Uh, that the curriculum will aptly prepare them for the roles that they will assume in the um, uh, healthcare system, no? be it uh, clinical uh, or the health administration or in community practice. But of course, uh, curriculum and the uh, yung mga related learning experiences still require that uh, those for us to hone these competencies, we still need to really practice on the ground. So yun po yung critical, which is why uh, we want to encourage uh, uh, our nurses to go and tr explore practicing in uh, public health so that uh, we can have more nurses who are ready for these uh, challenges. Kasi kailangan po meron din maging mentors in the future. So. We still, we also have to groom future mentors in uh, public health practice. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, Dr. Duque, would you like to input before we proceed with the PNA? Now you have said that you have a lot of training courses. How many of our nurses from the communities are able to make use of it? Now we're not only talking of nurses working in the community. We have nurses working in industry and they have to really go help. They're also frontliners. And during the pandemic, they would have to do a lot to help. So I wonder how, how many of our graduates, even at the BS level, we were 28 when we graduated, but it was good that we have specialization even at the BSN level where we decide whether we'll go into public health nursing or we go into ward management and so on. And to tell, to make the story short, only though the five of us who specialize in public health nursing really remain in the country, took a master's degree and even a doctoral degree. And so uh, I don't know how many of our graduates stay, stay in the Philippines. 
Hmm. I think based on what um, Dr. Politico has mentioned, um, we have almost 100 in the leadership course, but these are just those who enrolled in the leadership course. We have a lot of public health nurses also in practice and in this uh, forum. Maybe Dr. Anyonevo, would you like to uh, add a little bit in terms of the preparation of our grad, uh, BSN graduates for public health role? Yes, I think uh, with the baccalaureate program, uh, the uh, our our graduate beginning nurses are prepared no, to to work in the communities. Kailangan inspiration eh, uh, from from their mentors to really choose community health as an area of uh, practice. Uh, as as mentioned by uh, Ms. Ruth, only 13% of uh, of our nurses are in primary healthcare facilities. So we should increase that, no? Because how how can universal health coverage succeed if you only have that uh, uh, that percentage, 13%? But uh, I'm I'm confident that our graduate uh, our BSN uh, graduates are, you know, are are prepared. No, they are now have uh, they they have increased uh, hours in commute in a community setting, and um, and um, I think that uh, with uh, with the new um, what Chad no Chad curriculum, we are more prepared no in the, in the near future, and with um, and with the uh, uh, bill no with the nurse with the comprehensive nursing uh, bill no uh, that is forthcoming, uh, nurses will be legally uh, protected no to to really practice uh, their expanded roles in um, primary healthcare settings and industry settings. Thank you, Ma'am Cora. I think the key word there also is to inspire our new graduate nurses, even before they graduate, to come into public health. And speaking from the advocacy point of view, I think uh, President Melbert is already back. Um, Sir Melbert, would you like yes. to, to take the floor? Yes, Ma'am Jen. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, sir. So going back um, again, uh, I'm sorry po for the technical uh, problems. No, hindi yata kami nakabayad ng internet dito sa PNA. Choke lang po. <laughs> so I would like to focus my uh, reaction on the uh, uh, statement uh, made by Dr. Anuelbo that uh, nurses will be the catalyst, no? can be the catalyst for change towards the future of healthcare. Uh, I believe that uh, nurses can bring or enable change because the uh, nurses can inspire others to act and bring about important events or things to happen. Um, but how can we do that? Uh, as an advice, no, uh, uh, we need to evaluate, contemplate, and anticipate. What do we need to evaluate? We have to look back and evaluate or review the past. Experience is the best teacher, right? Uh, this mold us and develop us to be more competent enough to lead change. Then contemplate a thoughtful observation on the deep thought of assessing the current situation. We need to assess the uh, and examine the present. Um, magaling sa assessment iba nurses. Uh, this is an important tool in guiding us for a comprehensive intervention. And lastly, to anticipate. We have to anticipate what, what uh, lies ahead of us. The future is... Uh, the future uh, requires us to be the catalyst of change. In this case, no, the future of healthcare will depend on how nurses will be uh, will serve as the voice for uh, the people's health. We need to uh, look forward and plan for the future. Now, uh, we should not forget that nurses are uh, its fundamental role uh, is to provide safe, accessible, and affordable care ensuring quality health care services. But the question is, do nurses have what it takes to be the catalyst of change? For me, yes, we have what it takes because the very essence of uh, nursing is caring. We care for people because we are the care specialists. And also, we occupy the largest percentage of manpower in the healthcare system approximately 50% 50, 50 of the healthcare workforce, no, according to the International Council of Nurses. And also, another reason was nurses serve humanity, and by their actions, they protect the health and well-being of individuals, communities, and nations. That is according to uh, ICN President Annette Kennedy. 
one important uh, reason uh, also is that uh, nurses is recognized or the nursing profession was recognized as the most honest and ethical of the profession. People trust us, the community trusts us. Okay, in terms of public health, people will believe in what we say. That's why we can use our voice towards educating the public on what the future of health, regardless would what would the, the future of healthcare would look like. We will be the voice that will connect the health of people and the advancement of healthcare. Do not forget that uh, nurses are vital in achieving the universal health care, katulad ng sinabi ni Dr. Anunuevo. Kaya nga, di ba, ang government natin is pushing for universal health care. All for health, health for all. And to realize that they need to invest on health care workers, the manpower that vastly includes nurses. Kaya naman po, we need to stand up for our rights and being the leader of PNA, and uh, uh, as the accredited professional organization, we will stand for the rights of our nurses. The nurses should be given appropriate value for we are an important key player in the healthcare system. True enough what Florence Nightingale said. I would like to reiterate what Mam Cora said. Nurses are the frontliners in ensuring access and equity to healthcare. Kaya naman, nurses, let's do it. We can do it by promoting people-centered care that reaffirms genuine values of nurses and respects human dignity and show compassionate care. Promote individualized care that gives consideration on patients' perspective, values, beliefs, and cultural backgrounds. Then make, the, uh, make compassion as the true note true north of the nursing moral compo. Always maintain professionalism and leverage trust in nursing. And let's change the narrative of nursing. Together we find a strategic solution to engage the public in advocating for nurses because of the life enhancing value that nursing care has. Change is constant. Actually change is the only thing that is constant in this world. Kaya I joined uh, uh, Mam Cora. I joined Mam Cora with his uh, with her call that we need leaders. What exactly the type of leaders? The change leaders. Change leaders guide people through the transition from where they are to or where they need to be, which means getting people think or act differently. So we need you nurses to be the change leaders for the future of healthcare. So the question is, are we ready, nurses? No. Uh, if the future of healthcare can be compared to a Pandora's box, no, I would like you to emphasize, I would like you to focus on our role that uh, we are the front line in uh, uh, advocating for change. No, para bang tayo yung magbubukas ng Pandora, Pandora's box. And if it is a challenge in the future that the nurses should step up no, to open this Pandora's, Pandora's box, my advice was to do not close our eyes, nurses. Do not close your eyes, never cover your ears out of fear, and we should open the Pandora's box. Let us do it. There will be no, there will be dis disasters and misfortunes, but there is also hope. We must find hope. <clears throat> the next generation. PNA as the APO strongly support investing in public health nurses, training for skills development, and career tracking or career progress. Progression. I thank Dr. Coram uh, Anyanuevo for reminding us about what leadership should be. I will always remember, remember this. To lead is to act with courage, integrity, and that leadership play a vital role in pushing forward nursing advocacy and empowering nurses to be the catalyst for the change for the future healthcare. PNA salutes nurses and uh, happy International Nurses Day. Thank you. Indeed, isang maligayang araw ng mga NARS. Uh, ngayon po, we'll let us now proceed with, uh, the, with the next part of our program. I know you still have a lot of questions and additional inputs. You may type them in. Next slide, please, Abby. Given the call to meet the challenges to public health, and nursing, the UP College of Nursing as a WHO collaborating center 
for Leadership and Development in Nursing Development has partnered with the J&J Foundation for the Nurse Lead Project. To launch this important endeavor, please welcome again our Dean and WHO CC Director, Professor Sheila Arbonito. Thank you, Jim. So let me uh, uh, introduce the, the video that we will show you about the program. Uh, so even before the COVID pandemic, uh, the UP College of Nursing and Johnson & Johnson Foundation had initial meetings uh, to explore how we can work together to help support the growth of nursing in the Philippines and in the region. And Dr. John Vincent Flores, who is with us with, uh, now in this webinar, the medical director for Southeast Asia Integrated Education Program of Johnson & Johnson was instrumental to these meetings. Then with Mara uh, Chorian, the Global Community Impact Asia and Pacific Project Director of Johnson & Johnson, and also Lee Tran of Geek to Asia Foundation, we were able to shape the Nurse Lead Program. And uh, the program is the answer to our need for nurses who are leaders, empowered, advanced, and, and dedicated to serve the people. This complements our initial work with the Department of Health in pushing for advanced practice in public health nursing. We hope that through this course, we will have the public health lead, uh, nurse leaders who will be the key to the successful implementation of universal health coverage and primary health care. So can we have the, uh, the video, please? Thank you for that. Uh, we will soon start inviting public health nurses to the course for the first run in September. It will be a combination of online and face-to-face -face sessions, and we hope to be able to reach uh, nurses who are stepping up to perform many roles in public health, uh, in public health, and especially in areas where there are no public health doctors or due to other geographical or economical factors. And building a community of practice is also one of the goals of the program. And so we hope to organize the Public Health Nursing Society in the country. At this point, I would like to thank uh, Johnson & Johnson's for sharing our vision and for believing that we can do much more in improving the health and quality of life of people uh, by supporting nurses in the country and in the region. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dean. In line with that, let us all give a virtual welcome to the J&J Philippines President and Managing Director, Mr. Raghu Krishnan. Hello, everyone. Uh, I, I, I hope you can, uh, you can hear me, right? Yes, we can, clearly. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it, it's really an honor to be here and, uh, and a part of this endeavor. Uh, at JNJ, we believe that uh, frontline health workers are the foundation of very strong, healthy lives. And we have a long legacy 
for supporting and championing nurses and the critical role they play in elevating uh, healthcare systems worldwide. And on this International Nurses Day, we really want to acknowledge and celebrate their tremendous contribution to providing healthcare for all and to continue to empower them to thrive. So we also acknowledge that good health starts in homes or communities, right? And nurses, midwives, and community health workers are quite often the first and probably only link for communities to get the care they need. And that is why since the very beginning, we have supported uh, those who provide care and comfort to others and help to inspire the next generation of health workers. But today, the global health faces a completely different set of challenges. Our current health systems, not just in Philippines, but all over the world cannot keep pace with a population that's growing, uh, evolving needs and new health challenges. Like for example, recently COVID exposed that gap in a very, very big so to achieve those global health priorities, uh, we need about 18 million more health workers by 2030. 18 million, that's a lot. And out of that 10 million, just being nurses and midwives alone. At the same time, you know, while there is, a, there is a need for more health workers, there are also challenges that today's health workers, especially in countries like Philippines are facing. Right? Changing demands, increased pressure, tools and resources that are not very optimal for their needs and environment. So these challenges that nurses face are, are multi-layered and hence there is a need for us to shift our approach. And we also realize we cannot do this alone, right? We might unite this with the community focused on fostering the next generation of nurses and frontline health workers. So, so with that, Johnson Johnson is really stepping up its century long commitment to uh, frontline health workers with its new Center for Health Worker Innovation. So we put the health workers right at the center and are relentless about listening and learning to ensure the front lines of health can really thrive. And that is why we are addressing the healthcare uh, worker coverage gap, improving the quality of care and strengthening the primary community-based health systems. And one of the most important ways uh, of addressing this is through obviously training and education, by right? building the skills and capabilities of Filipino nurses. So together with our partners, such as the University of Philippines, uh, College of Nursing, led by Professor Sheila Bonito, we will build and strengthen our healthcare workforce to provide very high quality care and ultimately help change the trajectory of health for humanity. And we firmly believe that if we solve the challenges facing health workers, we will improve healthcare for everyone and thereby creating a world where healthcare is more equitable and more people have access to the care they need for fulfilling and healthy lives. Health systems in both developed and developing worlds will be better equipped thereby to meet patients' needs. So we chose to focus here because the ripple effect and the impact of this are limitless. Right? And with a very strong frontline healthcare workforce, we believe humanity's best and healthiest days are ahead. Maraming, maraming salam. Thank you very much. Thank you, J&J Foundation. Thank you, J&J Philippines. Thank you, Raghu. And thank you to everyone who have been posting your questions and inquiries, even as early as now about the public health, uh, the Nurse Lead course. So if you want to know more about the Nurse Lead course and other uh, related activities from the College of Nursing, please uh, follow the UP College of Nursing Facebook page and the Twitter account of at UPC, UP Nursing for uh, further developments and announcements. So it's like, let's continue with the rest of the program. Let's now hear a message to close our activity from the UPCN Assistant to the Dean and Public Health Nursing Mentor and Advocate, Associate Professor Luz Donne.
tunay na napaganda ng umaga para sa ating lahat, lalo na sa ating mga public health nurses. The morning talk of Dr. Cora Anyonuevo brings us hope for the future of health and the healthcare system as it provides a promising scenario for the people who will be responsible for ushering in a new era of nursing practice, the public health nurses. When I was still a nursing student, I have always imagined Florence Nightingale as RN, not registered nurse as we use now. RN to me, in my activist language, means revolutionaryong nurse. Winasak ni Florence Nightingale ang karaniwang pagtingin na ang isang nurse ay sunod-sunuran lamang sa doktor, walang kakayahang tumingin at mag-isip lampas ng bedside ng kanyang pasyente at walang gulugod upang manindigan para sa karapatan ng kanyang pasyente. Florence Nightingale practiced health promotion, used epidemiology and statistics to lobby for support for healthy public policies and funds, and faced policymakers at a time when it is unimaginable for a nurse to do all those acts. Let us all ponder on Cora's takeaway message that public health nurses can be leaders in public health. Thus, leadership should be the most important core competency they need to develop in order to become leaders of change. Change not only uh, in our patients' conditions, but change in societal conditions. Thank you, Cora, for inspiring us all to become the future Florence Nightingales who fought tooth and nail to professionalize nursing practice. We have a long way to go, my friends, but as we say in Waray, Padayon giha. Thank you very much, Professor Donis. Thank you, Dr. Anyonuevo. Thank you, Dr. Politico of DOH. Thank you, Dr. Duque of Nurses Initiatives for Change. And thank you, President Nelbert Reyes of the PNA. So thank you very much for everyone for joining us this morning. Before we finish our day's activity, we'd like to provide you with uh, e-certificates for attending today's webinar. For our Zoom attendees, please click on the link provided on your chat box. For our FB live stream attendees, you may scan this QR code and answer the evaluation form. Next slide, please. The evaluation will remain open until May 14, 12 noon, Manila time. And please be careful in typing in your names and your email addresses as your e-certificates are automatically generated. The, uh, we've also included the PRC accreditation number of the UP College of Nursing as well as the objectives and activities of the program today. So you may use the certificate as part of your self-directed learning. So with that, we thank you we thank all of you, all of our almost 500 attendees on Facebook live stream, our 200 participants in Zoom meeting today. Muli isang mapagpalayang pagdiriwang ng pandaigdigang araw ng mga nar. Thank you for attending. Bye bye. As we stop our, as we stop our live stream on Facebook. Those of you who are here on Zoom, can you please turn on your cameras for a brief